A word on this story. Um, you might have heard a lot about cycle helmets over the weekend. It was a government review of cycle safety, considering submissions calling for helmets to be made compulsory. The Department for Transport has played down the likelihood of this becoming a reality for cyclists, but the debate has now moved on to the efficiency of a high-vis jacket. What's not to like about a high-vis jacket? Everybody in a high-vis jacket can be, what's the word? Oh, that's it, seen. Surely there's nothing to not like, but many cycling campaigners are calling the issue a red herring. Let's speak to Carlton Reid, editor-at-large of BikeBiz.com. Carlton, good evening to you, sir. Good evening, Ian. You see, the thing is with your high-vis jacket, apart from the fact that I always think of somebody standing outside a builder's yard with one on, so aesthetically I'm not arguing that they are fabulous pieces of attire, uh, but you're never going to miss someone who's wearing one, are you? We'll have high-vis cars as well, then, if that's the case. So <laughs> every single car should be uh, fluorescent yellow. Bingo. The problem with the cyclist, of course, is that they're only like a foot wide, or thereabouts, and slightly more difficult to spot than, I don't know, a big 4 by 4 coming down the road. But it's whenever governments legislate, which is, which is what people are wanting the government to do, that's yep. when it becomes problematic, because I personally ride with a black jacket, However, when that black jacket gets hit by uh, car headlights, it, it, it goes an, an incredibly bright silver. So it is a high-vis jacket, but it doesn't look like a high-vis jacket. So where do you legislate? Do you legislate it's got to be a certain colour? And if you legislate for that, well, you've got to legislate that cars also have to be a certain colour. So it very rapidly breaks down into unworkable. But, but we know that the, that the visibility issues, are, we are told, are contributory factors to cyclists having accidents. And it's particularly at night if there's no lights or they're not wearing you know, an item of clothing, as you just described, and they haven't got all of that, that it can be pretty treacherous for a cyclist out there if they can't be seen. And that's not quite the same set of problems that a, a motorist has. Surely it's only with the cyclist safety in mind that these kind of discussions are happening. Well, the current law suggests or says that you've got to have lights. So that's what cyclists ought to be doing, and that's what the majority of cyclists who want to stay alive at night do. They have lights on their bike. So it, it comes down to, well, where, where does this end? You've got to have lights, then high vis, then do you have to have knee guards, do you have to have elbow guards to, to protect people? There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a limit. And forcing people to wear uh, personal protective equipment... It's fine if everybody does it. So everybody in a car ought to wear a helmet, flame-proof clothing. Everybody who's walking, but a car has already got all clothing. of that kind of safety stuff built into it. Isn't the isn't the real issue here, Cotton? I speak as a cyclist as well, occasionally. Mm. That that the cyclists don't like the idea of being kind of labelled or stamped or wearing a badge. They feel that there's something um, patronising about the idea that they have to uh, be marked out as a special case. Isn't isn't that really what's at the uh, the, the base of the anger or rejection? of this well cyclists aren't a special case because cyclists are not a homogenous group just as motorists are not a homogenous group motorists are all individuals cyclists are all individuals with their motivations their reasons for riding all these different things so why legislate every single cyclist should wear the same bit of clothing it, it, it just becomes quite ludicrous and it isn't ever going to happen so it's almost worthless us talking about this in many ways the government is never, ever, ever in a million years going to legislate that cyclists wear high-vis jackets. But well, cyclists don't want to wear helmet. helmets either, we're told, on some occasions, which seems preposterous. Well, Who doesn't want to wear a helmet when, when you, you're on the road? When you introduce this piece, you talked about the government maybe introducing this. Well, what, I was actually at a conference where Jesse Norman, the transport minister, mentioned this. It was a Sunday Times journalist who said, can you rule this out? Jesse Norman said... I don't wear high-vis, I don't wear a helmet. However, if other groups wish to raise this in the review next year, we'll look at it. But the DFT officials, all the officials over 20, 30 years I've talked to them, have always said that they're not going to do it because you can't make a whole group of people do something that they really don't want to do well, as lots of, a group. But we, we have to, you know, cyc- car drivers have to wear seatbelts, for example. I mean, they just do that because it's been worked out that that's the safety, safest thing to do behind a car. And it would, w- w- why would that be dissimilar for somebody on a bike to suggest wearing a helmet well, there would are, be safe? There, there, are, there are lots of arguments actually against that. 
if you actually look at the statistics of what happened when that was brought in, you, you, you kind of think, oh, well, that must have made everybody safe. But in fact, it actually makes people, it's homeostasis. People who have got um, safety equipment on, who have the seatbelts on, actually drive quicker. So there's an argument to be made to say that actually the seatbelt law didn't save lives. If anything, it potentially actually made it, it worse because people go that 10, 15, 20 miles an hour quicker than they would have done so you think, without wearing a seatbelt. So cycle helmets are dangerous, high-vis are dangerous, seatbelts are dangerous. Do, do you think anything no, no, is safe? not dangerous, but helmets, if, if helmets protect you in a certain... Um, if you fall off your bike at 10 miles an hour, that's what they're built for. That's what they're designed for. Yeah. Falling to a curb, 1.5 metre, um, uh, in effect, like from a bicycle, to a curb sure. at a slow speed. So they will not protect you against a car hitting you. So people think, oh, get cyclists to be safe where the cars are involved. But it, 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 the kinetic energy that's involved with a car a bicycle at anything over 10 miles an hour is too much for the design parameters of the helmet. So at that particular juncture, they're not actually doing anything. So why would you legislate for people to wear something that's not going to do anything uh, to protect their safety? Well, it must be better than nothing, these are, surely. These, are, these, are, these are not metal objects. These are lumps of polystyrene that work extremely well uh, off-road at slow speeds. They, they don't protect you in anything to do with a motor vehicle coming to, towards you. Almost obviously, but it does have to be pointed out. Indeed. Was, was that not an argument to make better helmets? You can't make better helmets because then people wouldn't actually physically have to wear them. If you made a motorcycle helmet, uh, in effect, that you couldn't actually wear them because you would sweat too much. A motorcyclist isn't doing anything. They're just being static and a motor is taking them along. A cyclist is using uh, energy and is burning an awful lot of, of calories to cycle and they do heat up. So helmets have got to be very light and very airy to get all the air through. So you can't actually make them any heavier than they are right now. OK. Um, listen, Carlton, you've given us some food for thought. We could probably do an entire debate just on this uh, specific point about the, uh, the the safety issues. But thank you anyway, sir. Carlton Reed, who's the editor at large of BikeBiz.com. Uh, the high-vis thing would make no difference. Helmets don't really make any difference. And he even suggested that seatbelts in cars aren't all they're cracked up to be. Um, I'll just remember not to make Carlton the safety czar at my next government meeting. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Back on the big issue.